students. Welcome to Data Analysis and Interpretation. So now that most of you have gone out and started to collect your data, uh, let's see what the next phase will probably look like. The purpose of this lecture is to um, start making some sense of the data that you collected. Uh, this is to see how your intervention went and how it performed. Then the, nec the next part, you know, once you get it all together, is you analyze it. And so the analysis helps you answer some of the questions that you were talking about the whole time as you were developing your program, which is, has the program made a difference? And then also, how big was this difference? Whether it was in, whether it was in attitudes, behavior, or even the knowledge that you changed steps in this process. So when we talk about data, there's a couple of steps that I'd like to bring your attention to keep in mind is organizing it. So how are you going to store it? Where are you going to keep it? Because that makes it easy for you to start preparing the data so that you can start describing it. Then when you describe the data, you know, kind of like just seeing, seeing what you got, looking at what you got, um, you start to interpret. And this is what's going to be really cool because when you were putting, when you make, when you're writing your objectives and when you were creating your pretest, posttest, that's what you were doing to help you assess and evaluate your process, assess and evaluate your the change that you were going to make. So when we talk about quantitative data, that talks about specifically like the number sign. In other words, any degree of change that has taken place. This is more number based, um, and then allows to um, allows an assessment to be made about the consistency of the data. Talk about qualitative data. So with qualitative data, this here is important because um, it helps you look at common patterns. Um, this is also important because um, it's used in, in forums where you're collecting information, like when you did your interviews. So there's not a real number thing that you can do there all the time. Sometimes people just give you kind of opinions and what they think and what they feel. You can't really put a quantitative value to that. So that's called qualitative data. Um, and I want to introduce the, um, the notion of theme analysis. So a theme analysis is essentially what qualitative data is. A theme analysis is when you look through qualitative data, so all the quotes, kind of like when you do your end of semester evaluations, we ask um, that you give us some feedback, and it's like open space where you type things up. We look for theme analysis, and I'll have some examples of this. There we go. So an example is, for example, like Tim 3, you would ask, uh, include any additional comments regarding the lectures. And if you see the three bullets, this is showing very raw results. It's, you know, just what people said. One, very knowledgeable but hard to follow. This is with regards to lecture. Expert in the field but not delivering material effectively as well as no doubt very knowledgeable but dry delivery. So the next step would be to analyze and interpret this. Um, so you're looking at it, you see the theme, so going back to theme analysis, the theme is, you know, it does seem that this person is knowledgeable, that does not seem to be a problem in terms of content. Um, a area of improvement would be in the delivery. So that would be something to keep in mind. Now that you've kind of looked at it this way, the next step would be to an, uh, interpret interpret your data, then asking the question, so why is this so? And then searching for solutions. So you look at your results. Um, in the past, you've looked at your results from the needs assessment findings. And now you're going to be looking at your results from your pre and post test project questionnaires. So things to keep in mind, how many individuals responded? This is what we call the N, which I'm sure you're familiar with. And just as you're looking at everything, putting everything in a table, you know, probably doesn't make a lot of sense yet, but you're just looking at everything that's called the raw data. Here are some examples of how some people may collect demographics. So you'll see they're just, you know, put in all the different race or ethnic categories, and then you tally it up, and that's your N on the left-hand side. Or uh, a different way to collect data besides a, gra a bar graph would be something like um, a pie chart. So this is where they collect the, like body mass index for their project, and this is what it looked like. Um, then your results could also look like this. Uh, this is an example of pre and post test results, very raw data, um, and they went ahead and put the question on the left hand side, and then they did two columns for pre test, post test correct. So, as you can see, if you're just quickly glancing at it, you can get an idea that there was a difference, there was a degree of change um, in the work that they did after their intervention. 
So for analysis and discussion, you want to ask yourselves were your project goals and objectives met? Was there an impact? What did you find? So interpretation of what the data is telling you, um, this is kind of going to come going to be up to your discussion. This is part of the discussion when as a group you start looking at what you know, did our program have an effect? And in some cases, it may have a positive effect, it may have negative effect, or it may have no effect. Um, in hindsight, this is very important. I was talking to a lot of groups throughout and saying that it's very important that if, you know, once you gather your data and you look at your pre and post test, is what may have affected the outcome. So was there anything that was missing, anything that you would do differently? Um, and did you discover that conclusions can't be drawn because you're missing data that you should have collected? So this is really cool because this is where now that you've done it all, in hindsight, you think, oh, we should have asked the question this way or we should have asked this question instead of this or that. Um, and a lot of times this becomes just the case where you have um, a clear sense of direction once you've um, went ahead and piloted something for the first time. Okay, so this is a very busy looking slide. However, uh, I feel they did a nice job explaining the changes in the end. So there was somewhat of a change between their pretest and their post test participant numbers. And also they show some analysis, which is the interpretation of what the data is telling you. So you can go ahead and take some time or rewind um, this video to watch this particular section um, to study it a little bit, get some ideas for yourself. However, we'll go ahead and move on now. When we look at outcomes, um, when you are discussing the outcomes of, you know, based on what you gathered, just keep in mind that there are such things as short-term outcomes, which includes mostly changes in skills, attitudes, and knowledge. Medium-term outcomes, which then starts to talk about behavior and decision-making, so maybe some higher-level stuff that takes a longer time to solidify. And then the long-term outcomes, which would be uh, when someone's, say, like in maintenance, persistence of behaviors and broader lifestyle changes, those are kind of like longer, what you would do with your patient visit after visit after visit, so what you would work on on a long term. So they may take time and, you know, it, you know, sometimes patients or your participants, your community will get to the end goal that, you know, you had in mind when you started this project, but it will take some time and you may not be there to see that. However, you may want to focus more on the short term stuff, which is how most of your objectives were written. So we're almost done now. Just in relation to your rubric, I want to go direct you um, to your rubric, which is on Blackboard under the Assignments and Rubrics folder, and go into the section that talks about the presentation rubric. And there's a section there that talks about analysis and discussion because you will be graded on this when you do your presentation. Um, and focus on these particular questions. Were your project objectives met and to what extent? Describe to what extent your obje objectives were met. Um, and then also include how many examples were met based on the data. If you read this particular example in quotes from years past, um, I'd encourage, for example, if you're writing something like this, I would encourage, you, encourage a more clear answer. So in answering it, say yes or no, um, and which, if any, were met or were not met, and then to what extent. Continuing on with the rubric, um, present obstacles or barriers, including solutions. So important, so important, so important. Um, this is where a lot of the learning actually takes place on how to improve the process for next time. Also, the other part in the rubric that we want you to refer to is called the, um, the star star wish format. So refer to your rubric. And so here we want to see if the group shared a star star wish, where a star is how you made a difference or an impact or how your project proposal made a difference or an impact and then the next would be your wish what we would have done differently say next time so this is very important in um, considering how you're refining your project and refining refining your process um, for next time considerations as you're writing your um, dis analysis and thinking about your discussion piece Correlations should be identified and discussed, including expected and unexpected results. So sometimes we learn things that we didn't really plan for or we get some more insight. So that the insight that you gather is um, almost, I would argue, sometimes as important as what you were looking for. And then also um, going back to goals and objectives, when you're discussing, I mean, when you're presenting this, to some extent, you know, you want to continue to discuss um, the um, in, I'm sorry, with, you want to continue to um, talk about your goals and objectives and your discussion analysis and um, look 
show us the evidence, I guess is the better way to put it. Show us evidence of how you met some of these goals and objectives or how you, you know, you probably didn't. Um, and then also, if you did not meet them, propose a rationale, maybe say in once you've reflected as a group and maybe individually as well, you know, what do you think would have made a difference um, if you were to do this again? What, why do you think maybe some of the objectives were not met? All right, that's about it. Try to keep it really short for you. Uh, if you have any questions, you know we're available. Um, you can email me, stop me in the hall, um, come to Mission Lab Hours, just uh, reach out. We'll find a way. And nice job. Keep going. You're almost done with all of the stages. And um, talk to you on Monday, February 8th for some of you, and then others also on February 9th. Take care.